بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هلا and welcome to my obstetric gyne lecture series Dr. Azdihar This lecture is part 2 uh, gestational trophoblastic tumor that's to say the malignant part of gestational trophoblastic tumor This will include the invasive mole, choriocarcinoma and placental cytotrophoblastic tumor In our previous lecture that's to say, part one, gestational trophoblastic tumor, molar pregnancy. I spoke about the overall cure rate for gestational trophoblastic tumors that approaching up to 100%. For patients with choriocarcinoma and placental cytotrophoblastic tumors using the treatment that have been established for over 25 years or more, the majority of patients can also be treated with a high expectation of a cure with minimal long-term toxicity that's why I do again encourage you to study this lecture hardly and understand its content so that we can improve our patients health care so the gestational trophoblastic neoplasia are the subject of our lecture today all the learning objectives of this lecture are must to know. We start with invasive mole. It is a complication nearly always of complete hydatiform mole, but it may come after partial mole, but, but this is rare. Invasive mole may metastasize to any part of the body, but commonly to the lungs. This retains hy hydrobic villi, which penetrate the uterine wall deeply causing perforation of the uterus, sometimes even life-threatening hemorrhage. This slide which will show you the histological appearance of penetration of um, uh, invasive um, uh, hydrobic villi to the uh, myometrium of the uterus. This is the myometrium, the muscle of the uterus, and these are the villi that penetrate uh, it. To metastasize, uh, to metastasize to other parts of the body. This is a, a gross uh, section of the wall of the uterus after hysterectomy, showing the vesicles that invading uh, the wall, and this is commonly uh, happen after complete mole. The second one is uh, the choriocarcinoma, which is a rapidly progressive, highly malignant tumor originate most frequently from complete mole, about 50%. The other 50% after normal abortion, non-molar abortion, or term normal pregnancy. It usually appears as hemorrhagic, necrotic uterine mass. And uh, in contrast with hydatiform mole uh, and invasive mole, chorionic villi are not present, are not found here. But instead of this, the uh, syncytotrophoblast and cyt cytotrophoblast will uh, transform into malignant abnormal cells, which is called anaplastic cuboidal cells. What are the clinical presentations? Either from the disease locally, uh, so it will give vaginal bleeding, or from distance metastasis. There will be abdominal wall, there will be amenorrhea, Symptoms from metastasis to the lung, so it will be respiratory symptoms like dyspnea, hemoptysis. So keep in your mind that the patient may come with respiratory symptoms first. Uh, symptoms from other metastasis uh, to the CNS, liver, or spleen. Uh, sometimes intra-abdominal hemorrhage because of uterine perforation. What are the investigations you must do in this case? Ultrasound examination, serum beta SCG chest x-ray, CT of the chest, abdomen, brain, and pelvis to exclude uh, further metastasis. Uh, this is a, a picture uh, showing a highly hemorrhagic appearance of choriocarcinoma. Uh, the third one is the placental site uh, trophoblastic tumor. It is the least common type of gestational trophoblastic disease forming about less than 2% of all cases of gestational trophoblastic tumors. Uh, it arises from uh, uh, cells called intermediate trophoblast cells, mostly uh, and commonly follows the norm normal uh, pregnancy, 
It can come after non-molar uh, abortion, uh, after complete mole, but very rare for on or after uh, a partial mole. The average interval between the uh, prior pregnancy and the presentation of um, symptoms of uh, placental cytotrophoblastic tumor is up to three years. So this is in contrast to more common types of trophoblastic diseases, which uh, appear uh, much shorter than this period. It may cause secretion of human placental lactogen. That's why uh, false pregnancy tests uh, will uh, uh, occur. And uh, the um, uncommon diploid tumors often is of XX uh, karyotype. This slide uh, will uh, show you the um, uh, type of cells that um, uh, from it arise the placental site trophoblastic tumors, which is called intermediate trophoblast. The presentation of this type of tumor uh, is uh, by amenorrhea, followed by vaginal bleeding. The beta SCG uh, elevated, but Characteris characteristically lower for the volume than other diseases of other types of gestational trophoblastic tumors. The clinical presentation can range from um, a slow growing disease to more rapidly growing metastatic disease like uh, and behave the same behavior like that of choriocarcinoma. Now we come to the subject of metastatic diseases. All these uh, tumors that we uh, speak about can be metastasized. So metastases of uh, gestational trophoblastic tumors occur in 4% of patients after evacuation of complete mole. But it is seen more oftenly when gestational trophoblastic tumor develop after non-molar pregnancies. So uh, these uh, um, uh, metastatic diseases not only after uh, molar pregnancy, it can happen after non-molar pregnancy also. It has tendency to our early vascular invasion and widespread uh, dissemination. The most common sites of spreading uh, is pulmonary, that's to say the lungs, 80% of cases. It will uh, show a snowstorm appearance or canon appearance in the uh, lung uh, when we take x-ray. Uh, there will be pleural effusion or embolic uh, pattern, uh, and it will give uh, respiratory symptoms. The other metastasis, the other, other site for metastasis is the vaginal, about 30%, uh, hepatic, about 10%, and CNS metastasis, about 10% also. Uh, the staging of these uh, metastatic uh, diseases, if the um, a tumor is uh, limited to the uterus, this will be stage one. When the tumor metastasizes to the vagina uh, and the pelvis, it will be stage two. Pulmonary metastasis, that means stage three, with or without uterine uh, 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 pelvic or uh, vaginal uh, involvement. Stage 4 means that the uh, metastasis is advanced, reaching the brain, kidney, GIT, or liver. How can we manage stage 1 metastasis? If the patient does not wish to preserve her fertility, so hysterectomy is the treatment of choice with adjuvant single-agent chemotherapy. Why we give chemotherapy? to reduce the dissemination of tumor cells, to maintain cytotoxic level of the drugs in the blood circulation to kill the circulating cancer cells if present, and to treat occult metastases, metastases if any present. Hysterectomy can also be done to all patients with a stage one. If the patient want uh, to preserve her fertility, so single drug chemotherapy alone can be uh, given and in resistant cases we can give the patient combination of chemotherapy that's to say uh, more than one a drug up to five drugs management of stage two and three when there is metastasis this is depend on the type of patient group low risk patient or high risk patient group 
Uh, this uh, classification is according to uh, International Federation uh, um, uh, classification of uh, obstetrics and um, gynecology. And in this uh, classification, they depend on the uh, many um, parameters, uh, like uh, the age of the patient, uh, the size of the tumor, the site of the tumor, um, number of metastases, um, number of chemotherapy and so on, or previous uh, treatment with chemotherapy and so on. And uh, they gather uh, scoring. And if the score is uh, six or less, uh, they uh, um, name this group low risk group. But if the score uh, is my, uh, seven to 10, much uh, than uh, seven, uh, they will name this group high risk uh, group or high uh, risk uh, cases. Uh, you don't need to uh, to uh, uh, keep these uh, things in, uh, in your mind, but uh, I try only to explain it to you in order to understand what I mean with low-risk patient and high-risk patient. So if the patient of low-risk patient uh, with vaginal and pelvic metastasis respond will be 80% to single agent, single chemotherapy. But if the patient from high-risk uh, cases, high-risk uh, group, so uh, uh, the recommended uh, primary treatment will be combination, intensive combination of chemotherapy. If ble bleeding from vaginal metastasis uh, uh, happen, we can do packing or local excision of the metastasis. <clears throat> In case uh, that the genital bleeding uh, or uh, genital bleeding is out of control or in case of capsis, hysterectomy, sepsis, hysterectomy must be done. If pulmonary metastasis, primary intensive, uh, intensive combination of chemotherapy must be given. Uh, now, uh, the follow-up of uh, stage 1, uh, 2, 3. It should be done by weekly beta-SCG measurement in the first three consecutive weeks, and then monthly, monthly uh, measurement uh, uh, until we reach the 12 consecutive months, and effective contraception must be uh, given during this period of follow-up. If we have uh, stage four, how uh, we will manage it? We should uh, uh, treat them with intensive combination chemotherapy and surgery. That's to say, if the liver is involved, hepatic metastasis, that's to say, so we can do hepatic artery infusion with chemotherapy. That's when we uh, include uh, complete remission in selected cases. If we have cerebral metastasis, CNS, CNS metastasis, so uh, uh, the whole brain uh, must be radiated, and sometimes in acute cases, uh, we um, may need to do craniotomy uh, to, in order to provide acute decompression. How we uh, follow up this uh, patient weekly, uh, beta SCG, uh, until uh, it become uh, normal for three consecutive weeks, and then monthly for uh, another 24 consecutive months, that's to say two years, and the patient require even gonadotropin follow-up because of high risk of uh, recurrence. What about uh, subsequent pregnancies for such a patients with gestational trophoblastic tumors? Pregnancies after high dirty form mole pregnancy uh, increase risk of having molar gestation in subsequent um, conceptions is up to one or up to two uh, percent. That's why we need to do pelvic ultra ultrasound examination during the first trimester to confirm the normal gestational development. And we need to do beta SCG measurement six weeks after uh, the completion of pregnancy, normal pre even normal pregnancy, to exclude trophoblastic neoplasia because risk for uh, recurrence of these um, malignancies is uh, uh, found. Uh, pregnancies after persistent gestational trophoblastic um, tumors, uh, patients who are treated successfully with chemotherapy can expect it to have normal reproduction 
uh, in future. And the frequency of congenital malformations is also not increased. So I end my lecture with this slide. Well, uh, uh, I wish you good luck uh, in your uh, examination. And again, uh, this is the snowstorm in Sweden that you will never miss it uh, in your clinical practice, will you? Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.